painting flexible polyurethane foams and polyurethane elastomers. In this tutorial, this is a follow-up to a previous video where we cast some different foams, different flexible foam formulas, and some of you had asked about painting techniques over flexible polyurethane. So in this tutorial, I'm going to do just that. The first part of this video will be focusing on the basics of using SC94, that is a polyurethane paint base, using that as a paint medium for both airbrushing and brush painting. And then I'm going to follow that up with some tests I've done on using the SC94 as an in-mold coating. And this could be used as a, a primer layer or as a skin on loaded density foams where I sprayed that into a silicone mold and then back that up with flexible foam and then the foam bonds to that uh, SC94 giving it a better skin quality. So more about that in a minute but for now let's get started with the painting process. Now first off SC94 the SC just stands for single component. In BJB's product line, there's TC, which is two component, and SC, which is single component. Now, before each use of the SC94, you want to make sure you shake that up really well. Make sure all the magic is properly dispersed. And as it comes, SC94 is a nice airbrush consistency. It's a nice low viscosity that will go through most external mix airbrushes. And I say external mix airbrushes, that's typically what I use. You could probably use this with an internal mix as well, but external mix airbrushes are just much easier to clean and maintain when you're spraying this kind of material that will set up to a rubbery material. You don't want to ruin a really good airbrush by putting essentially a single component rubber through it. Now once I've tested my spray pattern, we're just going to spray this onto the back of a silicone mold just so you can see what this looks like when we spray this on and allow it to dry and then peel it off. And typically when I need to speed up the dry time, I just use a regular hair dryer to dry that out. And once the SC94 completely dries, it dries to become a flexible, stretchy polyurethane membrane that sticks very well to polyurethane foams and polyurethane rubbers and a variety of other surfaces. We've also had people use this for painting latex masks. But the important thing here is that it dries flexible and clear. So it's ideal as a paint base for polyurethanes. Now before we get started, here are some important tips to remember when you're painting polyurethane foam and polyurethane elastomers. Remember that polyurethane foam and rubber or elastomers, these parts must be clean and free of any release agent residue. If there's any release agent residue, the SC94 will not stick and it will just peel right off. And also, you want to remember that some polyurethane rubbers may not take paint as well as others. Some polyurethane elastomers dry with an oily surface, and this can lead to the SC94 peeling right off. So always a good idea to test to ensure compatibility. And as we go through this video, I'll be listing all of the materials I used and link those in the video description so you can make sure that you're using compatible materials. Now, SC94 as it comes is just a clear material that again, you just wanna make sure you shake that up before each use. But because it comes clear, it's up to you to pigment that to the color you want. And overall, this is a pretty easy process. For pigments on this, I use water-based pigments that can be obtained at pretty much any hardware or paint store. Just make sure when you're asking for these pigments that you specify that you're going to be adding this to a water-based system. So pigments that are compatible with latex paints, for instance, will work great with SC94. Now these water-based pigments are pigments and they are very concentrated. So remember that it just takes a few drops to get the color you want. So typically when I'm uh, mixing up my paint batches like this, I typically use a color wheel to uh, mix the colors to my liking. And this is one of those things, start with a little bit of pigment and work up from that point because you can't remove that pigment from the SC94 once you put it in. So gradually build up to the color that you want and then you are ready to paint. So here I'm just mixing up a few different batches of SC94 with some of that water-based pigment. And whether you're airbrushing or brush painting, I always like to keep a piece of foam core board handy to test the spray pattern of my airbrush or just test the intensity of the color even when I'm brush painting. And that way you can get a good idea of what that looks like on a clean white surface before you start painting a critical piece. 
Now the head that I'm painting here is made with an FP40 polyurethane rubber skin. And the core of this is TC266 flexible foam. And that, of course, if you saw the previous video, um, that was mixed to the 50 to 100 ratio for a three pound density. Now, in addition to using the SC94 over flexible rubber skins like the FP40, you can also spray this or brush this directly on soft flexible foam. Here I'm airbrushing this over one of the foam hearts I made in a previous video. This is the TC266 flexible foam, again mixed to the three pound density. Now, also working right out of a mixing cup here, we can use this uh, SC94 mixed with our pigment, use that as a brush paint. And this is one of those things, again, that really just comes down to your artistic skill as a painter. So definitely, if you're just starting out with these materials, make sure you practice. This is where it's a good idea to keep some of your reject casts and play around with your painting techniques so you can get the hang of it because this is a lot different than painting silicones. Now here I've switched to a Pache airbrush. Again, this is an external mix airbrush and basically an external mix airbrush. What that means is the paint and the air are mixing outside of the airbrush. So it just makes maintenance a lot easier. Now, these are not as precise as an internal mix airbrush. You can get a lot more detail work done with an internal mix airbrush, but the uh, external mix airbrushes are a lot easier to clean and maintain, especially when you're using a paint base like this which will set up to a rubbery material. And here what I'm doing is just drying my layers of color one at a time. I'm drying those with a hair dryer before I move forward. And here I'm just putting a little bit more color in. This time I'm using uh, some yellow. And I can't stress enough, this is one of those things that your results with the SC94 will be as good as your skill as a painter. So overall, the mechanics of this are pretty straightforward. You can use this as either an airbrush medium or as a brush paint medium. And it's really important to make sure you dry your piece between colors. Not the end of the world, but you'll find that you get a much more muddy look if your colors start running together. Um, so each color that I apply, I set that with a hairdryer before I proceed. And that just ensures that all of those colors cure independent of each other. Now for cleanup, I typically use distilled water. And I use distilled water because it doesn't have any impurities that could clog up your airbrush. So typically for brushes, it's not as crucial. But when you're cleaning up an airbrush, really important to make sure you're running distilled water through that. And typically for that, I run distilled water through my airbrush. And then once I'm done with all my colors, I'll take the airbrush apart and peel out any residue once it cures. But I typically run clean distilled water through my airbrush after each color. And that way I make sure that I don't wind up uh, getting uh, contamination between those layers of color. Now this is a couple of hours later and you see that heart that I airbrushed. We have a really good bond between the SC94 and that really soft flexible foam. And same thing with our FP40 head. You see that FP40 got an excellent bond to the SC94. So again, real important to make sure that your skin material will take paint and that you can get a good bond between the SC94 and whatever surface you're painting. Now, for those of you that can't get your hands on some of the higher end, nicer water-based pigments, you can always use craft store acrylic paint. Now, I have found that it does uh, take more of the acrylic paint to get as rich of a color because it's not as concentrated. And also it does diminish the stretch of the SC94 a little bit. So be forewarned for most prop making applications, probably not that big of a deal, but be aware that that does diminish the stretch when you use traditional acrylic paints versus the water-based pigments. But the same rules apply, you stir that in, and again, you have an airbrush consistency or a brush painting consistency ready to go. And here, what I'm gonna do is again, put that into my Harbor Freight airbrush. And this time, we're actually going to spray the inside of a silicone mold. This is a TC5140 platinum silicone mold that I was using in a previous video to cast those foam hearts. And we're gonna spray in several layers of the SC94 as a barrier coat into the mold. 
Now, because I'm spraying this into a silicone mold and the SC94 does not want to stick to silicone, real important to use very light sprays and then set each layer with a hairdryer before proceeding. And now for this, I overdid it. I did about four or five layers and then dried each layer with a hairdryer. But the most important thing here is to get thorough coverage and dry it as you proceed so that you don't wind up getting drips and runs. And then before I cast my foam, I let this sit for a couple of hours and dry completely before I cast the foam behind it. And that way I don't get any contamination from the water coming out of the SC94 as it's drying. Now for this piece, I just cast some leftover TC284 flexible foam, and I didn't add any pigment to this just so you could see where the barrier coat stops and the foam starts. So this is just plain white foam cast behind that coat of SC94. Now, as I pointed out in the flexible foam tutorial, with flexible foams, they react and cure fast. So you want to make sure you get that into the mold, have everything ready to go, and pour that into your mold, clamp everything shut, and allow the foam to expand. And typically, these uh, flexible foams, like the 266 and the 284, both of these can typically be demolded in under an hour. I let this set up for about uh, 45 minutes before I demolded my cast part. Now, the reason for an in-mold coating like this is twofold. One is this allows us to put a skin inside the mold on a really low density foam. Like let's say we're casting something like the uh, TC266 in the very low three pound density. We could actually spray in the SC94 to create a skin inside the mold. And also, this could be used for rubbers and foams that may not take paint as well, because here we're relying on the adhesive properties of the liquid foam rather than the adhesive properties of the SC94. So now additional SC94 could be used over this surface. And now the SC94 has transferred to our foam part and is thoroughly bonded to that foam, or it could also be a rubber surface. So there you have the process of painting both extremely flexible foams as well as polyurethane skin such as FP40 with foam cores. And of course, as always, I'll put all the links to the materials I used in the video description. So be sure to check those out and also be sure to check the end screen. I'll link to some other previous tutorials like the casting of that FP40 head with the foam core. So again, check out the end screen. And as always, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe and share this video with your family and friends. And of course, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.